dear students i welcome you to this uh, next session and like i promised when i was discussing with you the occipital posterior position that i will be taking up deep transverse arrest separately uh, many of you have questions regarding how to um, deliver out a baby in deep transverse arrest so uh, for them i would like to request you to please kindly go and watch my uh, cesarean workshop not only deep transverse arrest but breech delivery step by step explanation how to deliver the hands how to deliver the legs how to deliver the buttons how to deliver the head in a breech presentation and uh, in every which way okay that means uh, in different techniques everything has been discussed in my uh, tutorial also and in my uh, lecture as well so my cesarean workshop pretty much encompasses everything previous cesareans bladder advanced and adherent bladder dissection different kinds of sutures how to take hemost how to create good hemostasis and obviously different techniques of delivering out the baby so uh, that's like besides the point now let's come back to the point uh, all these lectures tutorials are all available under the c section workshop in my app the link is uh, in the description below and uh, it's not a very difficult you know thing to search on google play store it's available by the name of irams uh, uh, OBGYN uh, DNB classes. So you have to just uh, uh, write apostrophe S, IRAMS OBGYN classes, uh, DNB classes. Uh, the link is there in the description, so you can go from there as well. Now, uh, today's class is about uh, discussing uh, deep transverse arrest. When I was discussing about occipital posterior position, I said I'm going to take a separate class. See, deep transverse arrest per se is not a very huge topic, but there is certain thing associated with occipital transverse position and that is also called as manual rotation, both uh, uh, full hand rotation and half hand rotation, which I'm going to uh, also talk in this class about. So first, let's start the first thing first, that is deep transverse arrest. So this is the pelvis, the maternal pelvis. And the, the definition, the definition of uh, deep transverse arrest happens to be that the sagittal suture of the baby, the sagittal suture of the baby lies at the level of the interspinous, at this, you know, the interspinous uh, level and the rotation, the internal rotation has not taken place and, or has taken place, but it is not going in the favorable direction. That means it's a it abnormal presentation the the suture is still right now the sagittal suture is in the transverse diameter of the inlet cavity though it should have rotated like this in the favorable condition it should have rotated like this and it should would the occiput would be right under the pubic symphysis later on it will be delivered like a normal delivery but in this case of course with the talk accordingly on the head but right now the baby is in this position so usually what happens at this point in time when the fetal uh, fit the, the the skull or the, the fetus has not changed its position that means internal rotation is not taking place and is stuck almost over here then slowly and steadily the uh, you know the signs of maternal exhaustion dehydration abnormal uterine contractions they start developing up in, in case of primary gravida and in case of multi gravida the situation can be even far more deleterious when we were taught in our un undergraduate level or postgraduate level also we were told that multi gravida is far more dangerous woman than primary gravida because primary gravida you know there'll be maternal exhaustion uterine exhaustion uterine relaxation and the uterus will not contract any further even despite of whatever attempts you try to do until unless you atrogenically prove you know kind of uh, produced excessive contractions in the uterus the uterus by itself the natural courses that it gets tired and it doesn't uh, produce any further contractions which saves the uh, uh, mother but in case of multigravida with growing uh, you know obstruction to in the in the passage of the fetus the uterus becomes more titanic the contractions become more powerful and you uh, the uterine rupture usually occurs not iatrogenically but naturally in a multigravida iatrogenically mostly in primary gravidas but um, spontaneously in case of multigravida, so multigravida is far more dangerous a woman as compared to primary gravida woman. So anyway, so this is what we were talking about in deep transverse arrest. So this is how you will, how, uh, this is how you will know this is a deep transverse arrest situation, but how will you diagnose it? In when you're trying to put your gloved finger in, if you try to, uh, you know, feel the sagittal suture, the sagittal suture will, will feel in the 
transverse diameter that means if you touch if you first of all you will not be able to touch the uh, the uh, this thing uh, ischial spine properly because the head will be right jam packed there sometimes because of molding you might not be able to appreciate the sagittal suture so finally the posterior fontanelle maybe you'll be able to uh, you know kind of touch and you will know that the posterior fontanelle is right in the right close to the ischial spine that means it was right occipital posterior position which has not yet completely rotated so in this case the best option in today's obstetrics is to go ahead and perform a cesarean section. Earlier on, what examiners would properly expect of you to answer, the old examiners specifically, uh, the uh, manual rotation techniques. Because that is the, uh, you know, one way in which you can help this female, a female who is like ready to, you know, uh, compromise even with the uh, obstetrical outcome. That means fine. I have had four, five children. I don't want a cesarean delivery. You do whatever you can, and I just don't. I just don't want to go for a C-section. So the only option that is left to you to perform for such a female is to take consent, to take her to the operation theater, to to have full, you know, um, uh, OT ready in anticipation of an emergency C-section. Obviously, to save the life of the baby and of the mother, uh, you have to give general anesthesia to this patient. You have to evacuate the bladder with full consents and counseling. You have to, now there are two methods of internal rotation. Actually, the, this is not called internal, this is manual rotation. This is manual rotation and what you do is basically you're shifting the head of the baby. So what you're doing is basically, now I'll, I'll try to show it in the pelvis but uh, uh, the movement might not be very clear to you because of the bony structure. So I'll take it out and I'll try to show. But this is how in right occipital posterior, suppose you're the head of the baby is in the right occipital posterior position and you are having a gloved finger. So in, there are two methods. One is the whole hand method, one is the half hand method. In the whole half a hand method, you take the entire hand, which is your four fingers along with your thumb. And you introduce the usually right-handed person will introduce the right hand, which is a dominant hand. So the rotation is easy. Don't think that the rotation is going to be easy in, in this female. Plus, she, the patient right now is in under GA. So you have to be meticulous, precise and fast as much as possible. All right. So you'll introduce the gloved hand, your dominant right hand like this. And your one hand, that means the thumb of this hand is going to fall on one parietal eminence and the four fingers will be on the second parietal eminence like this. This is going to grab the baby like this. So the movement, <clears throat> I'll show once inside and once I'll show you outside. So the movement, now what you do is you slightly dislodge the head. Slightly dislodge the head so that movement becomes easy for you because right now it's in the plane of least pelvic dimensions. It's pretty, pretty low down and the occiput is inside the, the sacral curve and promontory is blocking your rotation. So you dislodge the head a little above so that the rotation becomes easy. And what you do is right now when you introduce your hand, your hand is in pronation. Can you see this? My hand is in pronation. Just make it supine. Your hand will go supine and the head will turn like this. Your hand has now become supine. See. You can't appreciate it properly, but now you can. My hand has now become supine and the head has gone right below the occiput. The occiput has gone right below the pubic symphysis and then you will, you will not leave it there. You will not take your hand out. You will stay, you would put it like this and move your hand on the left of the mother. Keep it like this. Introduce a forceps. Ask the assistant to hold it. Then introduce the forceps with the other hand and again dip it and take out the baby. One thing which is very important which I forgot to tell you which and, and I, I admit that but you don't have to do this in front of your examiner is when, while you are doing this dislodging and you know now watch this movement again I'll do it above. So this was the right occipital. This is how the head was looking in the right occipital posterior position. I'll just put it like that. Your hand went like this, grabbed the, grabbed the parietal um, uh, eminence here, the parietal bone here and from this position, it went on to become this position. What about the body? What about the body? The body will also be rotated by you. The trunk will also be rotated by your other hand above. Do not forget to say that because this, just have a look at the baby. Okay, right now the baby was like this. 
and suddenly you've shifted the baby like this. Can you imagine the torque on the on the neck? So the other hand will shift the baby's body like this because right now the patient is under general anesthesia. The tone of the muscles is all time low and you can feel, not only feel the trunk, but can also shift the trunk as much as possible. Now, believe me, uh, the, the body of the baby will not just shift so easily, neither will the head shift so easily. It's just heroic measures. We do not use them nowadays. We've abandoned all these measures in place of good C-sections. But there will be a, a, a viva on these kind of heroic measures and you will ask you are supposed to answer. The other important thing that you are supposed to know is that the fetal heart has to be auscultated before the procedure and fetal heart has to be auscultated after the procedure is done. Also, one more thing which you have to say is that do a little overcorrection. Overcorrection in the sense that when I'm bringing the occiput here, I will not leave it midway. I will in fact overcorrect it. That means overshoot it a little. You overshoot it. You overshoot, instead of this, this uh, you know, the posterior frontal coming right here, it goes a little here. Why do we do that? Is because when I'm applying the forceps, the head tends to come back. So, uh, forceps application will be a lot, lot more easier and a uh, lot more precise if you have done a little over correction. So, the even if the head is kind of, kind of rotated back or is trying to come back, your forceps application still goes precise. So this was about the half hand method. Now what is the, uh, sorry, this was about the whole hand method. Now what is half hand method? Again, I'll take out the baby so that's easy for you to understand. In the whole, the, in the half hand method, the similar pre uh, prerequisites are important. But what you do is you do not use, now there are certain limitations of the whole hand method. The whole hand method, the problem is that you're disimpacting the head a little. You're kind of uh, shifting the head from the hollow a little above so there is a chance of sudden cord prolapse uh, there is a chance of sudden dip in the fetal heart there is chance you're, and you're kind of you know the baby is right now here so the uterus is impinging upon com completely on the uterus and you're trying to trying to disimpact the head there is a possibility of sudden dip in fetal heart sudden cord prolapse and sudden uh, uh, you know any event to occur <coughs> so we abandoned it plus it's not easy you know a lot of force is required, not just to disimpact, but to completely rotate. So, and, and sometimes when you're holding it like this and rotating it, just imagine that you're applying so much force on such a small body. So we thought of, you know, uh, going in for a little softer maneuver as compared to this. And that is your half hand method. In that, your thumb is not required. When the thumb comes into picture, the force becomes more. So when the thumb we've taken out of the picture, the force automatically reduces. Because now the force is exerted by only your four fingers tangential force, which is not going to be too much for the baby. So if the head is like this, what you do is you just use your, these, this tangential force for the baby. Just, just the tangential force and you abandon it if it's not getting, if it's not rotating properly. You try two, three attempts and if it doesn't rotate properly, then you just abandon it for the C-section. And of course, as the head moves, the body moves by the other hand's force applied on the mother's, mother's uh, abdomen. So the trunk of the baby moves along with the, uh, with the head simultaneously. So these are certain... Uh, maneuvers which you can uh, do to help uh, the occipital posterior position uh, come to a more comfortable occipital anterior position and followed by a normal delivery but uh, these are basically for viva purposes not uh, to be uh, you know used practically because of the simple reason that they have got a lot and lot of uh, problems like I just enlisted and fetal heart has to be auscultated every time before and after the procedure. And now uh, we'll start with face present.